Welcome to Worship at Trinity and welcome to any visitors who might be amongst you. Um, it's always lovely to have new people amongst us and we give thanks for you. Sharing in worship with us tonight are Carter up in the balcony. Hey Carter. Maggie on the piano. Uh, it's going to be a youth Sunday on Sunday. Uh, so Aaron Messler is here with me tonight and the Peyton young men are here to do communion. And my buddy Silas is passing out lights and he'll help me again later. Um, today in worship, we're going to talk about community. We're going to think about what that means to us, as in we are part of a beloved community of the church. The membership and activities of our church community changes over time, but our foundation does not. Everything we are and everything we do grows out of the love of God in Jesus Christ for us. Let us worship the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our Savior, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In, in, in peace, peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the
Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Silas, are you ever afraid of the dark? Yeah? What scares you about the dark? Um, here, come on up here so people can hear you. Uh, everything. Everything scares you? Is it okay if I let you talk in the mic with me? If I can get it off. Everything does? Yeah. All right. So, spiders, monsters under your bed, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Did you take a light for yourself? What? Did you take a light for yourself? No. No? You don't think so? Well, run back and get a light. And then... I do have a light. You do have a light? Okay. All right. I want you to go back to the back where that table is and turn on your light. But don't go all the way out. Stay in, stay in here. Okay. Can everybody see Silas? See his light? Do you think that's going to make you feel better in the dark, that little light? Yes. You do? Yes. Can you see way better now? <laughs> All right. Well, what if Jackson Godfrey turned his light on? Hmm. What if, um, what if Gene turned his light on? What if Bob turned his light on? What if Tammy turned her light on? What if we all turned our lights on? Does that make a little bit more difference? Yeah. When we all have our lights on, it makes a difference, doesn't it? When we stand by ourselves with just our own little light, sometimes it's hard to see it. Sometimes it's hard for other people to see it. But when we all have our light on, it makes it a little easier for us to see the light and to see the light in each other. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every right and the sin that clings so closely, and let, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Pursue peace with everyone in the holiness without which no, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I have some yarn here, and uh, Aaron, you can take one. Uh, Jackson, can you take one too?
what you've done. You're all tangled up. You're all linked together. You're all one big interconnected, sewn together mess. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Amy talked about community. How are we a community? What makes us that? How are we connected? That's a complicated question, and it's all tangled up in the people that make us up. I think when we talk about community, that we're talking about some commonalities, some complete differences, some absolute inability to find a shared thread amongst us, and some joyously shared experiences. Our community here at Trinity is most certainly all of those things. We have certainly endured. As long as I've been here, and long before that, we've had things that have challenged us as a congregation. There have been lines drawn about political subjects and candidates. There have been differences of opinion about biblical passages that have caused pain. We've lost beloved members of our congregation. We've endured criminal proceedings. We have sadly watched as friends have left here. And then there was COVID. We thought that maybe that was as much as we could take. And it was right on the heels of one of the most challenging things we have ever been through. Boy, we worried that that might be the end of us, but it wasn't. A community is never just one thing. It's many things. As much as all of those things challenged us, there were even more things that lifted us up, that connected us and provided us with strength. When I think of community here, I think of so many things that are part of this yarn web in front of us. Drive-in communion Christmas during COVID will forever be a memory of community here that makes my heart sore. It was zero degrees and we were freezing. When I say we, I mean more than a dozen people were here. Some were giving us breaks. There were the carolers. Someone made a fire to warm our hands at. I remember thinking Rick James was just going to freeze and become a solid block of ice because he just wouldn't quit. And the people driving through. Man, the people driving through. We had close to 150 people drive through that night in the dark, in the freezing cold, and every one of them checked to see if we were all okay and expressed their appreciation for us being out there. We wanted so badly to be in this community that nothing would stop us, and it didn't. And the need to be together in some way while we celebrated Jesus' birth was incredible. I think about Anita Burns, how Thursday nights, 
people would come to receive communion and every single person would stop and hug her or touch her or say something to her. Every single person. And she beamed. I think about Easter morning and the, nun and the sunrise service and the trumpets and how so many people would donate food for the Easter breakfast, then come downstairs and donate money for the meal that they ate that was made from the food that they donated. I think of one person every year who would pull me aside and press a $100 bill in my hand and say, give this to one of the kids to go on the trip so they can have a way to go. And then he'd hug me like a giant bear and then pretend like he didn't know me. I think of Christmas neighbors and how very carefully people donate to the kids. Every year, people ask me to clarify what the kids want because they just want those kids to have a good Christmas. I think of John Sines and how he has quietly been holding us together from the balcony for years. Our community is built from light, just the, like the lights that Silas showed us a little few minutes ago. When our lights are combined, we are stronger. We are brighter. We are able to see each other more clearly. We are able to keep our path directed to Jesus, and we stay connected to this community. As you look around at the yarn that was sort of passed around, you will see some gold ribbon. Those are the people in our community that shine brighter at any given moment, and we lean on them to be a little brighter sometimes. They can't be supernova all the time, but when they are, it's spectacular. You'll also see some yarn that is black. These are the people that are struggling to see their own light or they aren't able to see the light anywhere. People that are mourning, people that are ill, people with depression. They rely on the rest of us to share our light until they can join in. You'll see some brown yarn. Those are the people that are shining but have no idea how important their light is. They're busy, they're parents, they're caring, they're workers, and they're unaware of how bright they're burning. And then you'll see some colorful yarn. That would be the green yarn here. These are the people that are eager to share their light, the people that will just come up and hug you and ask you how you are, the people that love you and that want to make sure that your light is staying lit. All of these people make up our community, and our community is centered around the love of Christ, and he is in the midst of us. He is there in the middle of our yarn mess, holding us all together. He is loving us when our lights seem dim, and he's rejoicing with us when our lights are shining brightly. As long as we remember that he is the center of our community, we will not falter. We will always endure whatever comes our way. And we will remain this amazing, resilient, loving, struggling, laughing, loving, persevering, wonderful community that I am so happy and proud to be a part of. Amen.
It's time for us to pray as a community of believers. Today we're going to sing our prayer response. Aaron will say the prayer and then we'll say, Merciful God, we pray as your children, and then you will respond with the song. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the community of your church. Unite us, all Christians in praising you and loving our neighbors. Guide us in your way of loving others so that the world may be fed. Bless the disciples of Trinity that work to end hunger through their work with the little free pantry, the fort food pantry, feed your souls, and meals on wheels. Use us so that we all may know your love. Merciful God, we pray. Lord, listen to your children praying, Lord. God of all nations, bless the people of the world. Protect the innocent lives in Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, and in every place of violence. Turn our nation toward your peace and justice. Open us up to value the dignity of every person. Let equality, freedom, and wholeness be known by all people in all communities. Merciful God, we pray. us faithful protectors of your creation, where we're divided and unforgiven, nudge us towards peace, ignite us to reach out to people on the fringes, to listen to those who are lonely, and to honor each other's experiences. Bring healing in body, mind, and spirit to Eric, Clarence, Sue, Olaf, Rick, Nora, Pat, Jen, Drew, Devin, Jim, Izzy, Mike, Wayne, and those we name before you now. Merciful God, we pray. Finally, God, we praise for the ways you make us a community of your people. Open us to welcome others. Thank you for those who teach, sing, and share their faith. May we also share our faith with one another in the world. Merciful God, we pray. God's people say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with each other. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that, as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet, we meet you on the way. Amen. Announcements, announcements. Uh, there's a new member interest meeting after Sunday worship, if any of you want to attend that. Uh, the new member welcome will be the following Sunday after that. Indoor cleanup day will be Friday, November 17th at 9 a.m. You should go downstairs and see Fellowship Hall. Bob and his artificial shoulder have helped to take the wallpaper down and paint the walls along with about a dozen other people. He didn't do it by himself. But I'd like to give him as much credit as I possibly can. <laughs> um, Thanksgiving worship and five pie fest is Tuesday, November 21st. Pies and helpers will be needed. My guess is they should call Carla in the office to set that up or Wendy. There's a sign up in the hallway. And poinsettia orders are due November 27th. Uh, for, before Pie Fest, the Christmas neighbor's tree will be set up in the hallway out there, so look forward to that being here. We are being very brave this year, and we are going for 15 families at the get-go. So make sure that you look for that. <laughs> 